Hey everyone, welcome to Trucking Sustainably, or in this case, Construction Equipment Sustainability. We're here at Act Expo, Volvo Construction Equipment crashed the party with their very cool yellow equipment. This is a battery electric excavator. Uh, we got a wheel roller over there. We got a wheel loader over here. We're gonna talk with Dr. Ray Gallant, Vice President Sustainability and Productivity Services at Volvo Construction Equipment about how this is fitting into construction sustainability plans and what it means to those also running trucks and working in these fields. Let's check it out. Ray, good to see you. Thanks for taking the time. Very welcome. Good morning. So we're talking construction equipment and battery electric construction equipment, which is very cool. We got some heavy machinery here behind us. Can you tell me about the equipment with duty cycles, applications? How is electric, electric working in construction equipment? So, yeah, so here on the stand, we have three pieces of battery electric equipment. We have a small double drum roller, to a one and a half ton roller that's 48 volt. And then we have the two larger mid-size pieces of equipment that are 600 volt batteries. Okay. So the small stuff, generally, the duty cycle is three to four hours, which is normally what these pieces of equipment would work in a typical day. Right. Um, the larger stuff, you get into a full eight hour shift and these uh, machines are designed to give you six to seven hours of duty of work yep. to cover that eight hour shift. Okay. And then we have various charging options, so you can quickly charge them up. You can even do a charge over lunch okay. and get you an extra two or three hours uh, to go an extended work shift if you need to. Right, very cool. Let's talk about that charging a little bit, because especially on construction sites, it can be remote locations, right? How are you uh, powering the electric equipment on those job sites? So we have uh, actually three methods that we can get charging into the equipment. So. There are commercial chargers out there. We use the same protocols as automotive. So a commercial charger, Electrify America, or ChargePoint, or any of those that you see on the roadside, we can buy and supply the exact same charger to the contractor if he has grid power available. If the grid power isn't available at the site, we offer different uh, mo mobile chargers or portable chargers that he can take out to his site and charge from a battery pack to the machine and do a quick DC to DC charge. And finally, if neither one of those options are attractive, we offer uh, partner solutions that generate the electricity on site, either using a combustion engine generator or a fuel cell generator or a solar panel generator. So there's a number of different options there that we can offer to charge, to generate the electricity on site and recharge your machines on site. Right, very cool. We focus a lot on the trucking side of the business, but definitely relates to the construction side of the business as well. How do you see customers approaching their sustainability and decarbonization goals when they're running both on-road equipment, off-road equipment? Do they look at it holistically, or how are they taking a bite of that sustainability? Yes, happen? more and more they're looking at it as a holistic, and more and more one of the advantages that the Volvo Group has is we have both types of equipment. We're one of the few companies in the world that yeah. do on-road and off-road and are major players in both. Right. So we have the advantage of being able to borrow the technology, the charging okay. protocols, everything from one type of equipment to the other, yeah. from one truck to the equipment. Okay. So it's seamless for a contractor, if he's working with a Volvo group, to go from one to the other right. and have the same technology, the same protocols okay. embedded in the, in the machines. Our aim when we're doing the heavy equipment is to make it for the operator as much as possible like his diesel equipment that he's used to. Right. So that gets him comfortable immediately stepping into it, working the same way he does, having the same production. You know, the controls are familiar. Uh, but the next generation of machines, that's where we start to take advantage of the characteristics of electric drives and getting more productivity, more uh, speed, if you will, more precision, autonomous uh, operations, all those types of things that electrification opens up for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very cool, because I mean, on both the, the contractor side and the operator side, having those commonalities, right, yeah. makes it a little bit more approachable there. Can you tell me, uh, with operators that have been in the equipment, any feedback you've, they've, they've given to you, any of their thoughts? I know on the trucking side, once you get them into an electric truck, it's hard to get them out, right? How are they, how are they faring in the uh, so the um, it's kind of funny because operators will get off and a lot of them swear that it's more powerful than their diesel equivalent. Spec-wise, it isn't. We make it to be exactly the same, so the power, the lift, everything is exactly the same as the diesel. What they're feeling, however, is the reactivity. 
The electrics are very, very reactive, so they, when they pull back the joystick, they don't have to wait for the RPM to come up on their diesel engine. The power is right there, even at low RPM. So they will step off the machine and tell me it's more powerful than their diesel. They love it. It's very reactive, very uh, spontaneous, right. if you will, yeah. when you're doing their job. The other thing is they will comment on the noise and the lack of fumes, the lack of diesel exhaust uh, on their operation. So by the end of the day, with low noise, low vibrations, they're just not as tired. Right. You know, if they operate for 12 hours in a regular diesel machine, they're fatigued at the end of the day. On these machines, they don't feel that same sense of fatigue. So they appreciate that very much. Very cool, very similar to trucking. You know, the yes. other thing on the truck side too is uh, reduced maintenance and service because of the there's no diesel engine, so you lose yeah. all that maintenance. Do you see that same kind of benefit on the construction equipment side? Anything impacting the service yeah. yes, there? Yes, for sure. So we're um, projecting about a 35% save savings in repair and maintenance costs, but the reality is, in our tests so far, we're coming out at a much higher number than that. the The biggest driver is the no fluids, no oil changes, no fair air filter changes, things like that that you eliminate. But beyond that, the repair and maintenance for breakdowns is much less than the equivalent diesel because of the fact that you have less moving parts. Right. So it's a very simple equation. Electric motors, even though it's new technology for us embedded in these machines, electric motors have been around for a long time and the producers of electric motors have a very reliable, very nice motor to supply. Um, and battery electric batteries are coming to the same stage where that technology is being perfected very, very quickly. Very good. Okay, one last question for you. Say I'm a contractor that's interested in this. What do I need to know about my application and duty cycles to be able to come to you and have a conversation about how I can put electric uh, construction equipment to work in my application? So there, there's two things that I always recommend to contractors when they start talking electric equipment. One is make sure you have a charging or a refueling source. If it's electric or hydrogen or any of the other technologies that we're bringing forward, you have to have a refueling method on the job. You have to have it figured out before you start delivering machines because sometimes we've seen, you know, if you're getting a grid installation for that kind of power, it can take a year or more from some of the utility companies to put that in place. Second to that, there are advantages and there are changes that you need to make in the behaviors on the job site and the scheduling of the job site. So for instance, if you have an electric machine and you're wanting to run a very long shift, you're going to have to charge two or three times during the day. So there's going to be periods where the machine has to shut down, be on a charge or charge. So you want to reschedule your trucks coming into your site to be at times when the machine is available. You want to make sure you have redundancy in your machine. So if you have to have a machine down and charging, you have something else to take its place. So those considerations, but once you do that, what we're finding is the customers can see an economic path, can see a viable path to put in electric machines because the fuel savings are pretty significant over time and the repair and maintenance and right. no def fluids, all those things start to add up over time and make a pretty good economic equation. Very good. Great, and only thanks. to get better. <laughs> That's right. Well, thank you for taking the time. I learned a ton. Thank I you. appreciate it. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for watching Trucking Sustainably. We'll see you next time.